brought to you by the Wicked and Wicked Coalition. For the 12 times channel worldwide. Shalom. Willie Head Dark Skin, son of the Most High, yeah. Sing. Shalom to all of you, my father's children. We thank and praise our Abba Yah for yet another opportunity to study Abba Yah's word to us together. Hallelujah. And I'm grateful for this opportunity. I'm Dr. Yoshiyahu. And uh, that we'd been Israel, and I am the Moray here at the Ark, which stands for the Awakening Remnant Coalition. And oh yes, Abba Yah is waking up the house of Israel, the sons and daughters of the biblical Israelites in these last days, returning us to our king, returning us to our covenant. Re we are returning to our true identity. Why? It was stolen. It was stolen by some of the most wicked heathens to ever breathe oxygen. Do you hear me? Not my words. Oh, more are you just saying that? No, I'm not. Our scriptures say that we will go into captivity by the worst of the heathens. Oh, yes. When the more I be talking, I mean, a lot of times I'm using, most of the time I'm using script. And all you have to do is be a Bible reader and be like, yep, that sure is in the Bible. And so because it was stolen and because it was replaced by these old dirty, nasty slaver names, 
One day we would have to re, we would have to, obviously, you know, Yah would have to return unto us our name. It's part of the covenant. And because our language was taken, another verse in the Bible says, and he will restore unto his people a pure language. Why? It will be taken. Then another verse says that as he waved his hand to scatter his people, he will wave his hand a second time, Isaiah, to receive his people or to bring them back, to gather them. Why? Because we got scattered. We got to get gathered. <laughs> I can go on and on. This is all in your Bible. And what I've discovered is especially over the last 13 years, 14 years, that I really started looking at this. What I've discovered, number one, is that, here I go again with these numbers, 99.99999% of the people watching the Moe right now have never read their Bible. I've also discovered that when you do read the Bible from the very beginning to the end, most of the time, if you have ever done it, you did it according to the way these heathens told you to do it. Read a little bit here, read a little bit over here, read a little bit over here, read a little bit over here. Just get a little daily dose here. One verse, twelve, uh, two chapters on this on this book here. Go to these books, read three chapters here. Go over here, read a few chapters over there. Go over there and read a few chapters. And then at the end of the year, you can say, I read the whole Bible. Boy, these heathens going to hell for that too. Whoever teaches someone to read like that? No piece of literature on earth. You pick it up and tell a person, read a couple of verses here, a couple of sentences, then skip over here and read a couple, and then come back over here and read it, and then go over here and read a couple, and then come back here and read a couple, and then go out here and read a couple. That's not what you do. You tell them, start in the beginning and read all the way to the end, and then you do it again and read all the way to the end. Then you do it again, and you read it from Genesis to the Revelation to the end. From Bereshit to Amen. And you might need to do that about seven or eight times before you start trying to compare this with that, here a little, there a little, a verse. And you, you, you need to first get a handle on what is written and the fact that this is actually a message. This book is a covenant. And it's about a covenant people. And the reason why we are able to hear a little, oh my, I'm doing it again. <laughs> the reason why we're able to do the hear a little and there a little is because of a base understanding of all the scriptures. And I've been set apart to do that. And I'm glad to do it. I, I think I by yeah that he has placed it in my heart and given me the unction to have uh, dedicated myself to trying to understand this one book for the purpose of trying to help the house of Israel, especially in these last days. So Zion, when we come together, what a privilege it is for me to be able to take what I by Yah has given me over all these years. I know y'all be like, how many years? I'm on number 40. What? My 40th year. That I've been reading this Bible. And I'm 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 uh I probably have more years behind me <laughs> than I do in front of me, so to be able to pour it out to the house of Israel and to help us see and help us see these truths the way they're supposed to be seen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you can see the more, okay, and you can hear me all right, do, a favor, do me a favor, place a seven. Once again, we're going to be moving tonight, place a seven. We have some information we want to get out to the house of Israel. 
And I'm looking in the chat. I don't even, did I see any administrators in the room? Cause I think I just started tonight. <laughs> I was ready to go, I think I forgot to tell them. Hey, I'm going live. But if, there are, if they are in the room, shalom, shalom to all the administrators. And then of course, those of you, uh, my father's children who are so gracious as you participate in this chat, putting in verses and encouraging words and things like that. We, we definitely uh, appreciate you. Um, support the work of the ark. We are full time. You all know that. Sh uh, share the videos. Hallelujah. And like them. And let us help. Let's work together to help wake up Jacob. Um, when I by y'all put me in the ministry full time to do this work and set me apart. One of the things that I guess everybody wonders is if Yah is calling me to do something that's completely out there for him, how am I going to be supported? How am I going to live? How am I going to do what everybody, you know, get a house, live, drive, eat? How, how would that be possible? And Abba Yah gave me instructions and he told me, don't worry about what everybody thinks. You keep with Torah. You show the people in Torah where it is the responsibility of the people to take care of those who've been set aside by Yah and also show them in Torah where it's the responsibility of those who have been set apart by Yah, like you, to not only give a tenth back, but to be diligent about our Father's business, not to be slothful, not to, not to uh, go to work half-heartedly, no, mm -mm. but to give it all that I have and, and, and honestly, <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> it may not be the best in the world, but I'm doing the best I can do, Zion, to try to help you see it. Hallelujah. Put a 12 in here for the 12 tribes of Israel. And let me pull up this one more time. Told her about for them 12. This eclipse that's coming is a sign of our covenant and on yesterday on last night we talked about the fact that the majority of our people don't even know we're in a covenant we don't even know that our ancestors put us in an actual real covenant and the covenant is blood. It's a blood covenant. It's, it's a covenant that is ratified in blood. All right. And the reason which sets us apart from any other so-called cultures around the world that do sacrifices and all that kind of stuff, our sacrifices we ain't trying to please no volcano God. We ain't trying to kill our children in order or throw them in some kind of rivers and streams and all that to try to get it to rain and all that. No, you heathens, you know better than that. They trying to put that on Yahuwah and that is not our covenant. We explained that so crystal clear over the last few lessons that the purpose of the sacrifice of the lambs were so that Yah wouldn't have to kill the people. And by the way, I'm going to help y'all see something. When, when we did have our sacrifices, I would say over 90% of our sacrifices they didn't go no, they didn't go, they didn't just get sacrificed. We ate that. <laughs> yes, we ate it. We ate our food. Yes. We weren't just killing animals just to be killing animals. When they brought the sheep as a sacrifice, that's how the Levites ate. They, they said, oh, they're gonna sacrifice. Hey, we we divided it up. 
And then y'all get a shoulder, y'all get a leg, y'all get some um, lamb chops. And when the bulls would come in, we ate that. We ate sacrifices. When the bread came in, and I mean the flour came in, and the oil, and the salt, and the oil, and and the and the wine, that was for food for those of us who were set apart to do the teaching and the preaching and the care of the temple. The, the 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 watching over and the care for the widows and the orphans and to have that which is necessary for the strangers that are passing by and the upkeep of the temple. See, what I'm trying to tell you all is this world, not knowing the scriptures, have completely misrepresented your Elohim to you. And the symbol of our covenant being the sacrifice he, he, how wonderful it was that he's using a sacrifice that you can consume. Why? Because you were going to eat anyway. <laughs> don't, don't let them try to compare your king to these heathens. These heathens are worshiping the devil and it's a big difference. Okay. So we're in a covenant and we saw that in, in the book of Genesis that the lamb was slain and the blood of the lamb that were on those skins were then applied to Adam and Shoah, which represents the very first covenant where, where Yah did not slay Adam and Shoah immediately, even though spiritually we know that they had died. All right, but they didn't die the second death. I can't get into that right now because I'll be preaching too long. So let me just continue. Then we know that there was another, the man went wicked. We had Noah who found grace hand in, in, the, in the eyes of Yahuwah. And therefore, through the remnant of Noah's family, we saw another covenant. And we saw another covenant that was... Um, uh, that was in blood. And so we saw the death of the animals and it was for the purpose of going into covenant with not only Ab um, not only Noah, but with Shem, Ham, and Japheth. I mentioned yesterday that Shem then carries the covenant. Shem carries the covenant. All right. All three of the sons at this point are blessed by Yah. But Shem is the, is the one who carries the covenant. We find out later that Shem is Melchizedek. He's the priest or the, or, of Salem that over time passes it down to Abraham. Okay. Now, what I did not mention yesterday that I said I would mention today so that we can continue to follow this covenant properly. I want you to know that Abraham, Abraham, is a grandchild of a man named Eber. You need to write that down. Eber, that's the way it's spelled in the Bible, but it's really Eber, Eber. Eber, Eber is the word that we use today, Hebrew. So, so I, I don't want y'all to get confused, but just follow me. All of Eber's kids are Hebrews. Every one of them. All of Eber's children are Hebrews. So when you read the genealogies in Genesis chapter 10, and you see the descendants of Eber or Eber, those are all Hebrew people. Wherever they went all over the world, if they could trace their lineage back to Eber, they're Hebrews. So, so Abraham, being one of the grandchildren of Eber, is a Hebrew. I got to put this out because we're talking about our covenant. And I'm, I forgot to mention this yesterday. Our, our ancestor, Abraham, is a Hebrew. But Abraham is not a Jew. Abraham is not an Israelite. Did y'all hear? 
Moray. Did you get that out all over the world? I hope I did. I'm, I'm trying my best. Do you understand that? Would you do me a favor if you do understand that? Would you put a 1,000, a hallelujah 1,000 of understanding that's going forth? Abraham is not a Jew. Abraham is not an Israelite. Abraham is a Hebrew, and so are every other child of Eber is a Hebrew. Noah was not a Jew or Jewish. Noah was Enoch. But Eber, who is Shem's son, is the first person that we call Hebrew. So the reason why I'm giving you that is because we got to watch how Yah starts with all humanity, and he's narrowing things down. That's why I mentioned you had Adam, represent everybody, right? Then the world is destroyed. It gets down to, to Noah and his three sons. And then, it, then, the, then the covenant narrows again to through Eber, through Shem, Eber is Shemitic, because he's from Shem. And Eber is a Hebrew, so therefore Abraham is a Hebrew because of Eber. And Abraham is Shemitic because of Shem. And therefore we start to see, we are now starting to see the lineage develop. And we see and we start to follow the covenant as the covenant begins with Adam and then it begins to narrow and then narrow and then narrow until we finally get to where we are we are today. Now, um, because of time, I'm going to have to keep going, but there's a lot more in that. Abraham then meets Malik Zadik. They say it in English, Melchizedek. But it's really the king of righteousness. And the king of righteousness blesses Abraham, which means passes the blessing to Abraham. Abraham then pays tithes to him of all that he has. And now that's an important thing. I mentioned that in a previous video that I'm, that that principle of giving a tithe didn't start with the so-called written commandments. That is something that goes back into our ancestry through Abraham and his relationship with uh, Melchizedek. After he is blessed by Melchizedek, then... Uh, Obviously, he begins to walk in the promises of Yah. Yah called him out already, but I, I, the point I'm trying to make is that he had to have, basically, this thing has to be handed off in a, in a sense. It has, to be, it has to be passed down. So Abraham receives it from Yah, and it's a beautiful picture too. We've, we've already dealt with that. And then Abraham passes it down to Isaac where then we see that Isaac actually <laughs> uh, participates in his uh, portion of the covenant by being willing to die for it. He was willing. Ain't no doubt about that. 100% he was willing to give his life for this covenant because he must have also believed in the power of the covenant and the power of the resurrection. We, we, that was our last lesson. Now, now Isaac and his brother at this time, his brother's name is uh, Ishmael. They depart. But Ishmael is blessed 
because of the covenant relationship that Yah has with Abraham. But Ishmael does not produce the, uh, the seed. He does not produce the offspring that Abaya is going to use to save the world. It's going to be through Isaac. So there's just a, there's just a division. It wasn't going to come through both. And Yah chose Isaac. And when you read the scriptures, you can understand why. Now we are at Isaac. And we've got to see something about Isaac. Isaac now has a... Re I'm, I'm passing all of Isaac's life right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to the end of his life right now. Because, I, because my emphasis is to show you all the covenant. Isaac ends up having twins. He and his wife end up having twins. So the question is... Which one of the twins, if you got, you know, twins are basically born at the same time, right? Just seconds or minutes apart. So we have to, we have to do something with this covenant. This covenant has to continue. So the question is, what are we going to do with the covenant? And what line is it going to go through his firstborn Esau? Or is the covenant going to be given um, the responsibility of the covenant? And remember, we're talking about the bloodline. Is it going to be given to Esau or Jacob? And I want to say something to all of you. And I, I understand that when you when you wake up to the truth, especially if you're listening to some of these, <laughs> some of these folk on the street corners hollering and carrying on, whoo we they done came up with all kind of lies about Uncle Esau. Some of them have gone so much to say that 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 he was the devil, and that's not the, that's not what the scriptures say. But I can show you a verse in the Bible to tell you that he's your brother. So Esau and Jacob are twin brothers. Period. Same mama. Same daddy. Okay? This is not like the Ishmael Isaac situation where Ishmael and Isaac got two different mothers. No, this situation where we're dealing with this covenant, this time both sons have the same parents, same daddy, same mama. So, how is the birthright then decided? Which way is it going to go? The birthright of our covenant would go naturally to Esau. Yes. Yes, it would go to Esau. He's the oldest. He's supposed to represent the family name, the family wealth. And in this case, he's supposed to be carrying the family covenant. Why? He was born first. But let's see what happened. These are, um, oh, I'm sorry, Nikita chapter. Genesis chapter 25, verse 19. Genesis 25, verse 19. These are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, uh, the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister to Laban the Syrian. And Isaac entreated Yahuwah for his wife because she was barren. Now we have another miracle birth, by the way. Anyway, I'm not going to do that right now either. Uh, because she was barren. And Yahuwah was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah said unto her, Two nations are in your womb. Now remember, all nations were, at, were named at this time after the head of nations. 
So there's no, there is no, I know people want to say, especially the Israelites, they want to say, that's two totally different nationalities. No, that's not what it means. Uh, everybody who, who becomes the patriarch of a nation is a separate nation. That's all through the Bible. So when you hear, when you hear all these names of people, and then you hear uh, that they go somewhere and they pitch a tent, and then afterwards they have a lot of offspring, and then they start calling their offspring after these people's name. That is the way it is with everybody. So there's a, there's something here though we need to see that's in the scripture. He said there's two nations in their womb, so that's the first time for for sure she knows she's having twins. There is no ultrasound in these days. <laughs> When you got pregnant in those days, you just had to wait and see. Wasn't no peekabooing. You couldn't see. Wasn't no reveal parties. You had to wait until I, till, till mama had the baby. Then you find out, oh, she having twins. Oh, she having triplets. So she's now told, I think I just saw Jazz in the room. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. So watch. So she has, she has. There's two people inside. And this is what she says. Two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. Ain't that interesting? So what is this here? This is prophecy. So we see that Abaya is already given grandma... Uh, Rebecca, at this time, already given her prophecy concerning her two children. Why? Because what is important is where is this birthright going? Where is this covenant going? All right, let's look. And when her days, and when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins. Yep, just like y'all said. He said, you got twins coming. And yep, and it was twins. And the first one came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. Now, once again, we already know that, that word is ready. It's the same exact complexion of our King David. I ain't got time to get into that right now. But don't let these people who don't know the Bible tell you things and it sound good to your ear and then you just run with it. We got a lot of folk in our, in our, my sister got red hair. They used to call my dad red. So that's just how that goes. It happens. All right, call his name Esau. And after that came out his brother. And his hand took hold on Esau's hill. His name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old, that's 60. When she bare them and the boys grew and Esau uh, was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved um, Yaakov. Now that word there, remember the idea of love. And I know that this is very difficult because in America, we are saturated with emotions. So every time we hear love, it's an emotional feeling. But in, in Israel, um, in our ancient culture, the word ahava was not emotion first. It, 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 the emotions followed. It was action first. So this is really what it means. It means that Isaac was closer to Jacob. That's all. I mean, to Esau. I'm sorry about that. That Isaac was closer to Esau. They had like more in common. They, they just, that's the way parents are. And the reason is because Esau hunted a lot and because man, for some reason, that boy Esau could cook. <laughs> he could just cook. Now, if y'all come from a big family, you know that some folk in your family at least one person going to be able to cook. 
And then there's going to be somebody else in the family. They're going to try to cook. And you're going to be like, no, nah, that's all right. Let so-and-so cook it. <laughs> Look, these are, these are our ancestors, Zion. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody know if they ask me, they say, who's the cook in your family? Everybody, I ain't got to ask nobody. There's eight children. I told you, eight of us. Everybody know who the cook is. No question about it. Who's the cook in the family? April. Who you don't want to cook, and I ain't going to mention no names. <laughs> Who you don't want to cook? So-and-so stay out the kitchen. So does that mean that your mother and your father just loved one child more than the other because one child was close, because one child can cook better than another one, or one child can run faster or jump higher or whatever? See, we have to, we have to be careful, Zion, of bringing those weird European-like emotions and, and words into our text. It'll mess you up when it comes to the covenant. Because here, it would almost sound like, like um, Isaac is being evil to Jacob, like an Esau more. And that's not what the text is trying to say. It's just trying to explain something. It's trying to set up the scenario to let you know that what is getting ready to go down with the birthright don't have nothing to do with Isaac. And does not have anything to do with Isaac's choice. Because if it would have been Isaac's choice, it would have been Esau. And if you caught that, what time is it? How long I've been in the room? If you all caught that and that alone, it was worth being in the room with you. Put a 500,000. Come on. Put a 500,000. Seeing this Bible like you've never seen it before and getting understanding that you've never had before. And now you start to go, you know what? How come I didn't see that? It's okay. That's why y'all called me. Just like... We're going to see this like we've never seen it before. <laughs> you getting ready to see this covenant like you've never seen before. And oh, you about to see this go down like you ain't never seen it go down before. There's a whole lot of stuff we got you going to see with new eyes. And we're going to stop lying on our ancestors. I'm going to say it one more time if it was up. To, uh, if it was up to Isaac, he would have passed his, the birthright to Esau. And it's not because he didn't like or didn't love Jacob. But Rebecca loved Jacob. There we go again. Why? Closer. It happens like that. And for the same reasons. And Jacob made sod pottage, which means that Jacob could cook too. So not only could Esau make venison. Ooh wee. I feel like going somewhere, but I can't do it. But both of the brothers could cook. Jacob just couldn't cook as good as Esau. But it's obvious he could cook. Everybody could do all skills. And Esau came from the field. This is verse 29. I'm in verse, I'm chapter 25 still. Esau came from the field and was faint. That means he was tired. He was wore out. He was exhausted. And he said unto Jacob, Remember, they twins now. Same exact age, only separation, a couple of seconds. He said, feed me, I pray thee. <laughs> Wait a minute, man, you the cook? I know, man. I mean, you the one that can get down with the get down? I know, man, but you already got it cooking, man. Man, go on then, man, let me get some of that. Let me eat, let me eat, boy. Let me eat some of them red beans and rice. Yes, we've been eating red beans and rice a long time. Let me get some of that red pottage. I'm faint. Well, I'm so hungry. 
That's, therefore was his name called Edom. Did you see that? Some of these folk on the street corners, they got really terrible teachers. And because now those teachers are telling them not to watch the ark, which is stupid to me. If Abaya is giving Israel insight to the to text and truth, we should not be trying to stop people from seeing the Bible if Yah has put in our midst a seer. We should be saying, hey, you need to study under anybody who is really dedicating themselves to trying to really understand the Bible. Because if we don't do that in these last days and work together, Zion, we're going to be in trouble. They're telling people that, that he was an Edomite because, because either he was a white man or he's an Edomite because he was a devil. Or he's an Edomite because, no, the Bible tells you why they called him Edom. It wasn't even based on his skin tone. Remember I told you he was red, but that word really means ruddy. The reason why he got Edom is because really a soup. I know that. What? Yeah, it had nothing to do with his look. It was the red pottage. Therefore was his name called Edom. Now watch. Now, did you, wait, did I make that clear? Put a 600,000 in the chat. If I made it clear. Let me look in the chat. Told our about uh, Netanyahu for putting that in, in the, uh, in the chat. So people can see that the more angels up here talking. All right. Verse 31. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. What? And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. Hey, man, make me some soup. I'm hungry. Sell me your birthright. What does birthright have to do with soup? What does birthright have to do with pottage and beans? Jacob, we got to understand something. Jake, what made you bring up birthright right now? To your brother when he's hungry. Because as his twin, As his twin brother this whole time, and y'all grown now. You have always had this thing for the covenant, for the birthright. You, you loved it. You wanted it. You wish you could have it, but you knew you couldn't because you're second. He's the first one. And I don't know what you saw, but you said, hey, man, sell it to me. Now, let me tell you what the next verse should say. It don't say this. This, this, this is Moray talking now. This, this is Yost talking. This is not what it says, but this is what it should say. Nigga, I ought to knock your brains out your head. Are you out of your mind? Even talking to me about my birthright in comparison to some soup. Boy, I'd to take you in the back and hang you up by your ankle bones. Do you ever bring up the birthright in the same, in the same sentence, in the same word as some soup? The birthright come down through, through Adam, through Enoch, through Noah. Then down through Shem. The, the, the covenant then came from Shem down through Eber to Grandpa. And then from Grandpa to my dad. And now I'm in line and you want me to give up this for some, for some dang soup? Boy, I'll knock the teeth out your face. You better get back from me. Wait a minute. By the way, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I should do. 
で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、Say what you just said to me in front of my dad. I dare you. Comparing, comparing the birthright to some beans. Go and do it. That's what he saw, should have said. I dare you. You ain't, ain't going to say nothing like that to the one who had to climb up on an altar and was about to die for this thing. Go and tell him. He's right here. Tell Pops what you just told me. That's what Esau should have did. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Am I making myself clear throughout the whole world tonight? But that's not what Esau said. And Esau said, Behold, I'm at the point to die. What profit is this birthright to me? What? No, he did not. And that's the problem right here. That's the issue with Esau, is this. That line right there. That's what did it. All he could think about was his belly. And he thought about he about to die. First of all, you ain't about to die. You over-exaggerate. But number two, you said, what is the pro what prophet... Shall this birthright do to me? That was it, bud. As soon as you say you ain't got no profit in this birthright, it was over for you. And now a lot of you Israelites watching the moon, right? You wonder why I'm so hard on these pigment-eating preachers and these deacons and these so-called mother bold and, and all these so-called religionists. You wonder why I'm always on edge when I'm dealing with them. Because when I show them the birthright, this is exactly their response. When I show them we're in a birthright, man, we're in a covenant. We're in a relationship. This thing ain't no play thing. And they come back and say, man, I'm hungry. Shit. I ain't gonna give up no pig for no birthright. Shit. I'm gonna eat some pig. If I got to give up pig to go to heaven, I go to hell then. That's Esau. I ain't finna give up no gumbo, no witch's brew. I love me some gumbo. You talking about gumbo versus the birthright? I'm gonna take my gumbo, child. You going to hell for that. That's Esau. That's the same thing he did. What good is this thing for me? I'm trying to tell the whole world right now. Hey, y'all, we in a covenant. This birthright thing is serious business to you to carry on the covenant relationship with him. And your response is not, is it, now look, I, it, I'm shocked when it come to Esau. I can't believe that myself. And if I can't believe it, I bet you any amount of money that Jacob couldn't believe it either. <laughs> This Negro getting ready to give up his birthright for some soup? I was just talking crazy. I was putting it out there. But then he's going to say he don't even want it. Well, actually, at this point, he don't even deserve it. The fact that he would even put the birthright next to being hungry or some soup, I can't believe that. But I tell you what, I tell you what, let me see if this Negro's serious. Let me see. Let me see if he's serious. Let me see if my brother's serious. And Jacob said, swear unto me this day. Now he, again, Esau's response was supposed to be, boy, stop playing. I'm just hungry, man. Let's eat. No, that's what he did. According to the Bible, it says, verse 33. What time is it? My goodness. Verse 33. Look what it says. And Jacob said, swear to me this day. Same verse. And he swore unto him. 
and he sold his birthright to Jacob. Do you see it? Now, I want to talk to all these sneak listening, pigment eating preachers. Now, at this point, I don't care if you black, white, yellow, brown. That makes no difference. You sneak listening from Europe. You sneak listening from Africa. You sneak listening from the Ukraine. You sneak listening from Russia. You sneak listening from all over the world. Let me tell you something, and especially you slumber brews. I'm tired of y'all calling my grandfather a thief. Yeah, you know, Jacob stole the birthright. Yep, Jacob stole the birthright. Yep, Jacob stole the birthright. Jacob stole his brother birthright. Yeah, you know, Jacob stole his brother birthright. It's not what the Bible says. You're misrepresenting my grandpa. Let's see what the, what the text says. Let's see what the text says. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Did you see that? It's a big difference between selling something to somebody and somebody stealing something from you. He sold his birthright. Now that need to go all over the world. Put a 900,000. I can't stay in the room too long. Put a 900,000. Let that go all over the world. Let's fix it. That's not theft. And, J and if Esau could let a birthright that's holding all of the promises of Yah. If he let that go from something, for something to eat, he don't deserve to have it anyway. And that's what Yah saw in Esau as a child. Yah didn't make Esau bad. Esau got this thing to where his belly and some beans and some rice and some soup mean more to him than the covenant. Let me fix it. Easter and Thanksgiving and chitlins, and, 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 and gumbo, and, and ribs, big ribs. That mean more to him than the birthright. That's what I'm talking about. Marshmallows made with pig. Anything, any, everything more important than the birthright, because you can't see the benefit of the birthright. Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus, not my words. This ain't my words. I didn't write this Bible. This Bible was here a long time before I got here. Thus, Esau. This is how Esau despised his birthright. This is why Esau, this is how, this is the reason that we now know he doesn't get the birthright. He despised it. Which means what? It ain't but two of them. So if Esau has despised the birthright, which is the covenant. I'm, I'm going to get to that. I thought I was going to get to it tonight. I still might be able to touch it a little bit. Uh, then the covenant goes to Jacob. At this point right here, Jacob already possesses the birthright and the covenant. Now, that ought to fix it for you all when we get to the next couple of chapters when we get to chapter 27, even in my Bible, it says Jacob steals. Uh, let me see. 
Yeah, it says Jacob steals the blessing from Isaac. No, he did not. Isaac didn't know. I'm talking about his dad. Jacob's dad didn't know that Esau sold it. But Isaac knew. I'm sorry. But Jacob knew that Isaac had sold it to him. And no doubt, <laughs> he told his mom. Mom, you ain't going to believe it. What? You ain't going to believe what my brother did. Boy, what? Take a guess. What quit playing with me? Just take a guess. Uh, I don't know. He uh he uh shot two deer with one arrow. No, nah, mama, <laughs> it's way deeper. It's deeper than that. What? And she trying to guess. He like, mom, look, you ain't gonna leave it. He sold me his birthright. Man, that boy didn't do that. Yes, he did. How much did you have to pay him? You had to give him everything you have. He 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 sold me, mom. Look, he sold me his birthright for a bowl of, of red bean soup. And right there, his mama was like, "I knew that boy wasn't the one. I knew he wasn't the one. I knew from birth he wasn't the one. Matter of fact, y'all told me that he wasn't the one. Y'all told me that the first one wasn't gonna be the one. It'll be the second one. So now you need to get." Your negative lips off of grandma. Talking bad about her. Yeah, she she made her, she she lied it. No, no, no. You know what they're trying to do? Both of them knew that if 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 the old man Isaac would have known what Esau really did. Now, this is just a moral, Ray. This ain't in the Bible. I don't really know. But I'm just taking a wild guess. Isaac would have killed him. Or he would have rejected him or banished him or done something. Isaac would not have let that slide. So they keep this information about the selling of the birthright away from the old man. He don't even know. If he would have known, he would have blessed Jacob without all the trickeration. But for some reason, they decided not to tell him. All right, what time is it? Zion, I tell you what I'm going to do. The only thing I want to do is let's go to, to chapter 27. And I want to show you how this birthright got passed on again. I didn't get to where I was trying to go tonight. But I want to show you how important this covenant is. Go to chapter 27. And let's just read this and then we'll bid you farewell. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim that he could not see, he called Esau, his eldest son, and said unto him, My son, he said unto him, Behold, here am I. Or here am I. Verse 2. And he said, Behold, now I'm old. I don't know. I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, thy bow, and go out in the field and take some venison. And make me savory meat such as I love. And again, you know he could cook. <laughs> he talked about that. And bring it to me, that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. So we see the picture. He was still going to bless Esau. But Esau had already sold his birthright to Isaac. And his mother also knew. <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep saying Isaac. Esau had already sold his birthright to Jacob. And Rebekah heard when Isaac had spoke to Esau, his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. And Rebekah said unto Jacob, her son, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me savory meats that I may eat and bless thee before Yahuwah, before my death. Therefore, my son, Obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Now go to the flock and fetch me from thence two kids of the goat that I may make savory meats for thy father. Wait a minute, hold on. Such as he loved. Wait, wait, stop. 
Hold on, mama. What did you just say? <laughs> Rebecca said, now look, if Esau can cook, who you think showed him? That's all I'm saying. Who you think taught Esau? Yeah, Esau the best cook, but Esau can't cook better than me now. Let's get that straight. You can't cook better than mama. And again, it shows the family. Why? Because mama's the cook. But of the two sons, Esau became a better cook, even though, even though uh, Jacob was closer to his mama. He just wasn't the goodest cook. Mama said, I, I, I got it. When it comes to your dad, don't worry about that. Before y'all was born, child, I was making savory meats for your dad. <laughs> Let me get out the room. <laughs> I got to get out of this room. But she said, look, I know I can cook now. Don't, don't, look, look. Uh, I'll make such as he love it. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said unto Rebekah, his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I'm a smooth man. My father, peradventure, will fill me, and, shall, and I shall seem unto him as a deceiver. And I shall bring a curse upon me, and not a blessing. See, he was always worried about that blessing, I'm telling you. That's why he ends up with the blessing. Jacob is concerned about the blessing all the time. That's what we learn about him his whole life, even at his death. He continually is talking about that blessing. And where I was trying to get tonight, we're not going to make it. But I was trying to get to where, to where uh, Jacob, you know, not only receives the blessing, but then he also enters into covenant with the Most High, yeah. And I was trying to get to the point where then he then hands out the blessing, but he has 12 sons. He don't just have one or two. And I was going to show you that he actually begins to pass the same thing down. But I'll tell you what we'll do. If y'all can hold on, just hold on. And if I by y'all allow our days to keep rolling on, we'll come back and pick it up. We got to make it clear to the house of Israel how important this covenant is and to show you that you got the covenant honestly. And the fact that our people, a covenant people, later on turned our back on the same covenant answers all the questions concerning why we were kicked out of our land, lame's name was taken, Everything stolen, history wiped out, slave trade, both all of that has to do with the same exact covenant that Abaya is getting ready to show the world with this olive tile mark across the U.S. I know somebody said, man, that's a long ways from uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You think it is. But it's not. Why? Because the blood of the covenant, the real blood of the covenant, what about it? It never loses its power. And you heathens know that. It never loses power. Ah, yeah, yeah. Ah, to the highest mountain. Is that all my way? No. It flows to the lowest valley. What the, the blood of the covenant. is what we're returning to the covenant 
that covenant relationship with us and Yah is what brings our redemption. May I say this? It's the covenant that guarantees our salvation. That's why in the book of the Revelation, you see the requirement for entering into the kingdom. Those that keep the commandments. and the covenant, the commandments of Yah and the covenant. I know you say, no, they say testimony. They, that, that's not the right word. And the covenant of Yahoshua, the Mashiach. I gotta go. We'll, we'll pick it up. We unraveling this thing a little bit out of time so we can understand why we need to turn to him before it's too late. Thank you, administrators, for your work in the room. Thank you for all of you, my brothers and sisters, my father's children. Read your Bible and see whether or not these things be true. Put a one million in the chat. Thank you for your support of the ark. Thank you for your donations to the station. My prayers be with you. You pray for me. And we'll continue to help wake up Jacob to our true identity and turn to our king before it's everlasting too late. It won't be long. Our king is coming. And we're going home. So Zion, keep Looking up.